Hi, my name is Andy and this is a video um, in which we add OpenID security to the REST API that we've been writing over the last few videos. Uh, this is almost certainly the last video in this series. Um, part of the reason I did the whole series is because I'm interested in how, how you do the security on this kind of thing. So um, we'll quickly have a look back at what we've done, talk about what OpenID is and how it works and what the steps are required to log in. I'll show you a new um, uh, feature that I had to add to the REST API to help me test this stuff called Who Am I? Talk about why we need a browser for this to work. Then I'll go through what it looks like for the user and then I will go through the implementation but a lot of the implementation is basically just magic provided by a library. So to me the interesting thing about this is, is more about how it works, what's, what's actually happening. Okay, so let's start off with um, what are we doing? Well, we're writing a kind of a YouTube for, uh, but for poems and we're starting off with the API. Once we've got all the API functionality sorted out, we ought to be able to implement a website in theory. It's obviously made up. We ought to be able to implement a website um, on top of the functionality that the API provides. So far, our API can list poems, search for poems, go and get particular ones and change them. In order to be able to change them, you need to have the right login. So we've got login using um, HTTP authentication. And then last time we added um, uh, a way of keeping you logged in without having to provide your login credentials every time using a token in a cookie. Uh, but that was a bit of a fat. So can we do better? Can we make life easier for ourselves? Well, with OpenID, potentially we can. That's, uh, that's what OpenID is supposed to be for. So basically what it does is it lets someone else do the authentication part um, for you. So um, uh, instead of us having to check usernames and passwords, and then make a cookie and all that stuff, make a token in a cookie. We just hand off all that work to someone else. So the advantages of that are we don't have to hold on to uh, this valuable information about users that like the username and password and stuff. We don't have to make tokens and make sure that our code for doing that is secure and good. Uh, and the user doesn't have to remember another password that they're um, uh, for our site because they can use the same password they're using for their OpenID provider. Okay, so here's how the user logs in. It's a bit complicated. It's kind of inevitable it's going to be this complicated when you think about it. So first of all, um, our application, us, we ask the user for their open ID. An open ID is basically a URL that points to somewhere that will provide authentication. So once we've got the open ID, ID, we use that to find to work out who your provider is. Go to your provider and ask whether you're authenticated and the provider will respond no um, so we've got that response back from the provider so the provider is this other person that we're trusting to do authentication uh, the app is us so we the app redirect you to the login page for your provider because the provider said well no they're not logged in at the moment so the user logs in um, and as part of us redirecting you to the provider's login page we gave somewhere that the provider should redirect you back to once you've logged in. So they redirect you back uh, to our application. Now uh, the application can ask the OpenID provider again, uh, is the person okay? And the provider will say yes. And if we don't like how many steps there are there, there is another way you can do it, which is that you can establish a shared secret with the provider. So when we redirect to the provider, we also provide some information about a shared secret. And then when the provider redirects back to the application, they can, uh, uh, as part of that redirecting, they can also give us uh, kind of a tokeny type thing, which means that we don't have to do that last bit of checking back again, is this person okay? Because they've given us something that we can trust, um, uh, uh, that we know means that it is them who's saying it's okay, not something else. Uh, so that would be a slight shortcut of the last two steps. But yeah, basically, ask the user uh, who their provider is, Talk to the provider to make sure you're logged in and if necessary, log you in and then continue. And we'll continue and that open ID that they provided becomes the user ID of the, of the person who's, who's logged in. That's their kind of unique identifier. So if you're already logged into the provider, it's a bit simpler. Basically, we ask the user for their open ID. We ask the open ID provider, are they OK? And the provider says yes. And that asking OK process is not just saying, are they logged in? Are they someone that you recognize? But potentially could also be, is this someone 
who has given permission for this application to use their identity or use certain information about them which the provider might give us. For example, their full name instead of uh, just their ID. So that the provider handles um, uh, asking the user, do you want to provide this information to this application? So um, they, the person doesn't have to trust us at all. They can trust the provider with their information. Okay, so in order to test this stuff, I had to add a new action, a new HTTP endpoint. So here are the curl commands I'm using to talk to it. So it's called who am I? It's under the, the same uh, uh, URL path as the other stuff we've been using. So API slash v1 slash who am I is our new action. So if you do that using curl and you're not logged in, you get back anonymous. And if you do that and you've provided a username and password like the second curl command here, it will give you back just the user ID of, of who's logged in. That will be useful to us to work out what's going on with this login process. Um, uh, I don't think I've shown you the details of how to implement that, but it's, it's pretty straightforward as you can imagine. Okay, so just a brief pause to say we are going to need a browser to make this stuff work um, because of the redirects that happen. We have to redirect to the OpenID provider, but we don't know what their web page is going to look like. So we can't kind of automate that using a command line tool. We have to actually send the user to that page and let them interact with their provider. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, first of all, we get, we've got our application running. We go to this URL, who am I? And it says anonymous because we haven't logged in. Okay, so that's the first thing that happens. And what the user has to do is they have to go to this login OID URL. Um, and if this was a if this was, a, was an actual website, we would presumably send them to this page if they clicked on some kind of open ID button. Basically, they go to API v1 login OID, um, and that's a page uh, which basically is asking for your open ID ID. So they type it in there. You can see where it says example.com. I type something in, and they click login. So that's providing the open ID thing. They get redirected to their open ID provider. And so my open ID provider is Stack Exchange. So they get they get redirected to their provider, whoever that is, in this case Stack Exchange. Um, they type in the username and password, they get asked whether they want to allow this application. Um, assuming they all sign in correctly, they get redirected back. And the place we told Stack Exchange or the open ID provider to redirect us back to is this login OID page again. So the same page we were at before. But this time. Uh, because you're now logged into your open ID provider, uh, we just respond with logged in instead of um, uh, instead of asking you uh, for your open ID. So now let's go back to who am I? And you can see that now our user ID is that open ID that I typed into the box. So we are logged in. We're logged in as this Andy. This Andy person whose open ID is at example.com. Okay, so uh, that's that's what it's like for the user, and obviously, um, in the websites you've used that that may use OpenID, it's a prettier experience. But basically, that's what's going on underneath. It asks you for the OpenID name, goes to the OpenID provider, and logs you in, and then comes back to the application. And when the application asks the OpenID provider, "Is this person who they say they are?" the the answer is yes. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we need two new um, URLs to be supported. So in our URL section of our Python code, we're going to add two more lines. One is this one that says open ID, slash open ID, and one that says uh, that's the login OID that we've seen already. So login OID is a bit of code that we're going to write. This slash open ID thing is provided by web.webopenid.host, which is part of the web.py library. So a lot of the real magic for this code it's under the slash open ID URL. It's just done for us by web.py. We don't have to care about it. So basically when you log in on the login page, it sends you to this slash open ID URL and then that does the thing that redirects you to the provider and does all this, the magic. So um, let's have a look at the login OID uh, page. So this is the code that provides that. So basically it only does a get and all it does is it, it checks status is the status on this web open id object which is part of the web.py code and if this if the status comes back as true and then we're logged in and you remember when we uh, once we logged into our open id provider and we went to this login oid page it just said logged in 
So that's why, um, if your status is coming back true, you're logged in. Otherwise, you're not logged in yet. So what we have to do is um, web.header with just some uh, usual stuff of, um, this is a HTML page. And then we use web open IDs form method to, to create as a form asking for our uh, open ID. And then we, we provide a URL of where you should go to once you click log in on that form. And as I said, that goes back to this slash open ID uh, URL that we defined on the previous slide. So in this code here, the W is just web open ID. The reason I just made a W is to make it fit on the slide. So it's just web open ID provides this method called form, which just draws an HTML form for you to log in. When you click log in, you go to slash open ID. Slash open ID does the magic of sending you to your provider. You come back from the provider back into the login OID page, and this time status will be true, so it will say logged in. Are you still with me? Okay, so a little bit more of the implementation. In the, very, in the last few videos, we've seen this uh, method, authenticate user. Um, uh, we add a little bit at the top of that method, uh, which basically checks your, whether you're logged in with web, with OpenID, and if so, we don't need to do the rest. So we say OID is uh, OpenID.status. So that status thing actually returns your OpenID if you are logged in, otherwise it returns none or something like that. So if that OID has come back as something, then we just return it. We just, we've just we already got your user ID, and the authenticate user method returns your, your user ID. So um, if we've already got it, return it. Otherwise, we carry on with the same other ways of authenticating that we've already had before. By the way, all this code um, will be linked from the blog post that's linked from the show notes um, on YouTube. Um, there's a little GitHub repository with all the code in, so you can see how this stuff fits in with what we've already got. Okay, so um, we're nearly there. The, the only thing that we need to do is try and work out what on earth is going on, how is this actually working under the covers. Um, it, it's, it's fairly complicated and tricky, and I probably haven't uh, covered it all, but um, the key piece of information for me for understanding what was going on was this. If we look at the um, uh, what's being sent back and uh, to and from the server, when we ask, who am I, one of the things that's getting sent is this cookie, and this cookie was actually created by the web open ID code. Uh, and it's a security token. So underneath what's, what's going on here is not only is our open ID provider, someone like uh, Stack Exchange, creating uh, a, a cookie token, uh, which is not what we're looking at here, but they, they will make a cookie token because that's the way they do their logging in. But also the web.py open ID code, instead of having to go back to the provider every time, it's made its own token. That means that we know that this user is identified as that particular open ID. So when we make further requests, like for example this who am I request where we're not providing any credentials, that cookie which has been stored on your browser gets sent along with the request. When we ask the open ID code, is this person uh, logged in as this open ID, um, or is this person logged in with open ID? Uh, then the that web.py open ID code examines the cookie, understands that it's valid, and returns us back that uh, that ID of your web of your open ID. So basically, what that means is that the open ID web.py open ID code is doing the job that we were doing last time ourselves of making a token and checking that it's okay, making it expire at the right time, and making sure it's secure and all that pain. And uh, when that token expires, it will then rely on our open ID provider, which in, which was Stack Exchange here, um, to do a similar job of keeping the token going. And when that token expires, or if you log into a different person, um, we're, we'll be relying on the open ID provider to check whether your credentials are valid and create a security token for itself in the first place. So, so basically, that whole job of um, knowing whether or not someone is a valid user based on their username and password and doing all the difficult token stuff is all taken out of our hands by the open ID process. So the user doesn't have to trust us um, with anything really. Um, they can they can use our website without trusting us with their username and password. Um, and that's it. So um, uh, the rest of this series, if you're looking for it, uh, is on that uh, YouTube videos page, along with a load of other videos about all kinds of different programming topics. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you should see links to blog posts and videos. Very occasionally I retweet something. Um, I caught my interest as well, although I try not to do that. Uh, 
Um, if you look at my blog, you can see uh, updates on open source projects I'm working on, and uh, and the videos all go on there as well. And uh, my little bits and bobs that I, I've worked out to do with programming or to do with configuring Linux machines often. Um, if you want to look at all the open source projects that I work on, have a look at artificialworlds.net. Hopefully somewhere on the page right now there should be a button that says subscribe if you want to see more videos. And see you next time.